Test one, two. Test, test, test. Check one, two. And welcome to Hagen Stadium. Oh, there it is. That's the wrong one. And welcome to Hagen Stadium. I'm Devin Jarvis. Check one, two. One, two, check, check. Check one, two. Check, check, check. Check one, two, check, check. WICB, I'm Devin Jarvis. Higgins State, check, check, check. And a score. Check, check, check. All right. System is set up, it's talking to ICB, so we're all good there. As long as it's set up on the switcher, we're fine with that. I trust somebody to do that. I just have everything down there. Yeah. Check, check, check one, two. How did it go out last night? Uh, we are good to test. What? Yeah, it's working. Okay, perfect. Really? Oh, wait. Uh, Check one, two. Check one,
Take the station for innovation on the go with the WICB iOS mobile app. Anywhere, everywhere. Available in the App Store. That was Tara Lightfoot with No Hurry. Before that was Large Brush Collection with Arm's Length. And we started the set with Fiona Apple, Heavy Balloon. I'm your DJ Digits here on 92 WICB, giving you the digits to call or text the station. It is 607-274-3217. Once again, if you would like to call or text the station, have a request or just want to talk, call 607-274-3217. Coming up, we have stuff from Sweet Pill, Lanny Jones, and the Spirits. But first, this is Pixies with Here Comes Your Man, here on the Station for Innovation 92 WICB.
Song requests made easy. Text the WICB studio at 607-274-3217. child.
we'll have to talk about it. Hey, Toby, you read me? Set up to win. Wind up to Toby, you read me? We're good for a test whenever you guys want. Yep, gotcha. We're going to be going live at about, uh, we'll do 47, and then we'll wrap around like 57 or 58. Sounds good. Do you want to do a test for Cam and Ray? Sounds good. All right. Just text me. I'm going to take the headset off. You just heard Sweet Pill uh, with Star Child. Before that was Lonely Jones and the Spirits with Stay at Home. And before that was Pixies with Here Comes Your Man. Uh, now let's take a look at that central New York weather. This afternoon, there's going to be increasing clouds with highs in the low 50s. Later tonight, slight chance of showers with lows in the low 30s. Tomorrow, it's going to be partly sunny with highs in the low 50s. Then Sunday night, it's going to be mostly cloudy with a chance of rain with lows in the high 30s. Finally, on Monday, chance of rain with highs in the low 50s. It is currently 40 degrees Fahrenheit here on Ithaca South Hill. Now I'm going to pass it off to the coverage of the Ithaca College uh, lacrosse game uh, here on 92 WICB. WICB is innovating your weekends. Weekend rhythms, ladies first. Female fronted hip hop, rap, and R&B. Catch your favorite women in the game Sunday nights from 10 to midnight. Only here. WICB. You're tuned in to the station for innovation. Keep it here. WICB. A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in New York. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by NISPA and the New York State Athletic Administrators Association. on the nationally ranked number two overall RPI engineers. The first face-off is set to begin in a little over 15 minutes, but before we get you to the action over at Higgins Stadium, we welcome you into the WICB studio for our pregame coverage of Bombers men's lacrosse. Hello, everyone. My name is Matthew Javoni, and I'm joined in the studio today by Blake Katzman and Anthony Labonte. Gentlemen, as I mentioned previously, RPI comes into this matchup ranked second in all of Division Three men's lacrosse. What can you guys tell me about this RPI record and some of their impressive wins? Well, first off, I think the big the big win that we, that you can really capitalize on is the fact that they beat RIT last time in overtime. You know, a team that has arguably the best transition attack was stopped and absolutely like put to a halt by this RPI defense. You know, they're sliding. The way they defend is just absolutely phenomenal. You know, they're, ar they're arguably the, be the best defense in the country, and there's nobody that comes close to them. I mean, you look at the Liberty League right now. There are multiple teams that are ranked in the top ten, which Ithaca has to face off coming up this, this upcoming few weeks. They are 2-0 in the Liberty League. They can continue – if they continue this battle as – as um as they are doing so far, there we are most likely going to see them not just in the Liberty League playoffs. We're probably going to see them in the national championship. And let's talk a little bit more about that Ithaca record now. As you mentioned, a strong Liberty League schedule upcoming. What has Ithaca done so far? 
Well, I think right off you can talk about those Georgia State defensive middies. You know, ground balls taken by Jared Sedlock, who's been an absolutely key focal point for this Ithaca defense. Um, you know, they've been good, but they haven't been fantastic, you know. Guys like Chris Sowell, who's really started to step up and face off. Um, you know, Sam Baker on the attack, who's put in a couple goals, you know, has gotten some great playing time, you know, has really been a force to be reckoned with. You know, Charlie Niebuhr, of course, a literary beast over here that can absolutely put the ball in the net whenever needed. But this Ithaca team, if they're going to win today, they're going to really need to get rolling. They absolutely need their attack, especially with Graham Brady and some other guys in that attack line. They really need to step up and put them in the back of the net. Here's the thing with Ithaca. Their, I don't know if their record is completely showing how they're playing. They have a 22-point differential on the season, a plus 22-point differential. But most of that came off their game against Lycoming, where they won 24-2. It's very difficult when you lose to another Liberty League opponent like Vassar, which can be stated the weather conditions and, and such happening there were a big factor that caused into that loss. You can't be losing games like that, and right now they're 6-3. and three. They still have the shot to make it if they can have a good game tonight, and if they continue going forward, we may see them ranked and even in the Liberty League playoffs. Speaking of ranked, as we mentioned a couple times already, RPI ranked very high, number two overall right now. Do we see them moving maybe to number one overall as the season keeps going? And has it come to as a surprise to you with all of the ranked opponents they've played that they're still undefeated? Um, I think absolutely not. I think the game that maybe surprised everybody was was RIT. But if you look at RIT, the way that they really favored their attack and how good their transition attack is, RPI was set to win. And they were, they were hungry, they were ready, and they came in looking like an underdog. But they came out on top, you know. I think this is an RPI team that can absolutely go number one in the Liberty League. They have the best shot at winning the title, you know. There's teams like RIT, teams like St. Lawrence, you know, that can really put up a challenge. But at the end of the day, you know, RPI is that team, and they may be ready to take number one very soon. I mean, RIT is the second highest ranked team in the Liberty League. They went to overtime with that team, which, hey, as ranked opponents, that's kind of what you, you expect to see. You expect to see a close battle. I don't know if it's going to be how many wins that RPI gets. I think it's, is the number one team going to lose at all? Because if the number one team loses one, two games, that's when we may see RPI jump, jump ahead and get towards that number one spot. Now, since joining the Liberty League, Ithaca's 2-5 and five against RPI, including three straight losses, capped off by their 14-9 to nine loss last season. Do you think that history is going to repeat itself today, or do you think Ithaca has a chance to flip the script here? I am not very confident in Ithaca flipping this one. Um, Ithaca, they're a good team this season. There's no way of going past that. It's just the fact that RPI is on another level this year. They're playing out of their mind, and this is going to be something where I expect it, it may be close, but I don't expect it to be a runaway for Ithaca, and there is always that chance of a runaway for RPI. You know, I think there's a. I think I'm going to disagree with you, Anthony. I think there is a chance. You know, guys like Chris Soule, Chase Brewers, if they can really step up in the face-off, you know, against a guy named Angelo Ven Venuto, who is arguably the best face-off in the Liberty League. You know, you can also talk about Joseph Perry in the goal for RPI. If they think they can get their offense, get it rolling, you know, find a way to really cut through and attack and really beat this RPI defense, they have an absolute shot of winning this game. As I've said before, you know, this is a game of possessions if you don't know lacrosse yourself. But, you know, if they can really get these possessions, get the ball in the back of the net over and over again, this game is not out of play. Now, you mentioned it a little bit there, but I want to go a little further into that. What do you guys think the keys of the game for each team is going to be today? Key to the game is going to be for Ithaca, you gotta you got to keep possession of the ball. Their, their goalie is so good, you have to keep working him. You have to keep shooting at him. At some point, he's going to tire himself out. He's going to run out of steam. you got to get one in the back of the net. That's kind of what you need. You can't be just playing half and half all the time or else he has enough time to recover. He's going to miss his shots. He's the best that goal in the Liberty League for a reason. You know, I'm going to agree with you in that sense, you know, but I think a couple guys that can really put this to the test are Charlie Niebuhr, Graham Brady, and Sam Baker. You know, they're fantastic attack middies. You know, they're able to get the ball in the back of the net when needed. They're the type of guys, you know, that can really stand out, but also some other guys that can really contribute to some offense. You know, Micah Gillum, who's had goals in a couple games. Jared Sedlock, who can put it in the back of the net, especially he needs to get those ground balls today, you know. As, you know, RPI is one of the best ground ball teams in the Liberty League. Um, and then, you know, Chris Sowell and Chase Gulick, you know, on faceoffs, you know, they're the two that really are going to be looked at to make sure this offense gets set and rolling. And if they can't get it together, you know, this could be a runaway train for the RPI, our engineers. And I want to move now to 
your predictions and also what you expect to happen in today's game. I've said this already. I don't think I have very a fair chance of getting swept away by RPI. We can see that. However, score-wise, I think that we get some big goals. We could see a score somewhere in the range of, oh, let's throw it out there, 13-7. You know, I like your pizza. I like your – your um your take here, but you know I'm gonna keep a little optimism for our Bombers. You know I don't know I don't really I'm not 100 percent sure if they're gonna win today. You know I really want to believe so. So you know what I'm gonna go 13 to 12 overtime win for the Bombers. Matt, what do you have? I I it's it's tough because I really want to go with the Homer pick here and pick Ithaca, but RPI number two in the country. They're rolling after that overtime win against RIT. I think we could see a close one. I'm going to say RPI maybe wins this one 12 to 7. And then finally, before we toss it over to Higgins Stadium, I want to talk a little bit about first-year head coach Tommy Pierce and his impact on the Ithaca College Bombers. Guys, what? how have they reacted to him so far, and do you think that that relationship is going to continue to build through today's game? You know, I absolutely do. You know, I had a conversation with Michael Gillum who said, although – if you don't know already, the previous coach, Jeff Long, is one of the greatest coaches that Ithaca has had. Tommy Pierce is also a great addition. You know, a lot of these guys believe that they're playing a lot more flexible. They're playing a lot more loose within this Ithaca offense and their defense. You know, there's a whole new era here. And although it's the first year and it hasn't been to what it could be, it's going to keep getting better and better from here. And the Bombers have a great chance of becoming back to what they used to in their prime and possibly getting a national trip back to the South Hill. Matt, I think we could maybe wrap this with a little Ethan Fuentes said they went seven and six in week two. This season they haven't had that that bad luck. They were overtime winners. They won overtime at the buzzer to finish the season. What's that kind of that kind of pattern that they're building for this season? Well, that is going to do it here for our pregame coverage of Ithaca men's lacrosse. But don't go anywhere because when we return from break, Cam Mana and Rihanna Dupro will have the call live from Higgins Stadium. We will be right back for our we will be back for our halftime and postgame coverage live from WITB Studio. But for now, I've been Matthew Javoni alongside Blake Katzman and Anthony Levante. Bomber Lacrosse coming up after this. The WICB Podcast Network and News Department present How Are You Actually? Uh, we are ready to go whenever you guys are. Uh, just heads up as a reminder, I know you probably already know this. Uh, top dial, so just make sure that we're uh, Sounds good? Yeah, we're good. No, 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 go. Alrighty. Can you just send it now? Yeah, go, thank you. Probably gonna miss face off, honestly. Well, folks, everybody loves an underdog story, a story where a team on the rise dethrones the Kings, and today that could be in the works from the South Hill as the 6-3 and three Ithaca Bombers welcome the challenge that is yet to be mastered, and that is the unbeaten and number two nationally ranked RPI Engineers. And with that, we say good afternoon and happy Saturday, a beautiful one here on the South Hill alongside Rihanna Crow. I'm Cam Anna. We'll be your eyes and ears this afternoon from Higgins Stadium for the Liberty League Game of the Week and Ithaca's conference home opener in a game that means so much, Rihanna. Yeah, I mean, a ton. Ithaca as well, looking for their first Liberty League win of the season. RPI, they've been so unbelievably dominant. Does the Bombers have a fight in them? Do RPI just come in here and dominate? We'll see. It's Venuto and Sol to get set, and we are underway from the South Hill. RPI 10-0 and coming off a Saturday win last week where they took down number two RIT. And the Bombers will start for it first from left to right in their white home uniforms with the blue lettering and the blue numbers and the white shorts. And RPI in their red blacks with the red numbering, red letters, and the black shorts. This Bombers offense, first chance in front. This one off the mark on a very hard shot from Charlie Niebuhr that rolls to the right side and towards the corner, and the Bombers will keep it. And a strong part of this offense is Niebuhr and his ability. And if they can get him really right around 20 yards out, he can do a lot of damage. 
Yeah, I mean, with this RBI offense being so potent, Charlie Niebuhr is going to be the heart and soul of this team today. Tenth in the Liberty League in goals per game. This is the guy that you want out there scoring goals today. Graham Brady from 40 yards out goes back to Niebuhr. Now on the near side, it's Jack Pastor. Left-handed pass comes back to Niebuhr. Niebuhr steps back. Now behind the goal is Kyle Proctor, the junior midfielder. Does a lot of damage over here. Comes with a left-hand pass in front, a fake, and just a miss towards the right side. It was John Ceranic, that bounce shot, bottom right-hand corner, just off the mark in a solid save from Joseph Perry. But Proctor, first guy to it. Bombers do keep it. 25 here on the shot clock. Shot in front once again from Brady. This one's off the mark. Proctor in front. And the Bombers still here with possession with 23 on that shot clock. And folks, once again, a reminder, you're listening to WICB Radio and the Bomber Radio Network. The start of this one, the Liberty League home opener for the Bombers after a non-conference win against Miss Accordia that came on Wednesday. Brady with it right by the crease. Now comes back in front. Hard shot and over the head. Niebuhr just missing that top right pull. Perry didn't even have to get a stick on it. Bombers have tried a couple shots now just off the turf. Brady, one more chance with the shot clock winding down. Bombers cannot connect in the first 90 seconds. RPI looking to take it and move it out near the restricting line. A hard hit there on the defensive side from Zach Neely from RPI. Pushed down Ceramic, and now RPI will take it. 13.30 remaining in this first period just underway, but we had a long possession there. The Bombers... Five shots, two of them on goal, just not connecting. Yeah, and what a great face-off win by Chase Gulick to get this going right off the bat. Get to spend a little bit of time in your own O-zone. Not something we were expecting early on. RPI, though, this first crack at offense is going to be crucial. Their offense really potent out there. And this RPI team, we talk about the meetings between the engineers and the Bombers. RPI's taken the last three meetings, but by no more than five points. And this Bombers team has talked about it, and they've talked about it during that pregame show that Ithaca has that confidence knowing these past performances against the engineers. As after a long conversation, the Bombers will keep it here. A penalty that goes against RPI. So the Bombers possession for almost two minutes. As we said, five shots already near the goal on the junior goaltender, Joseph Perry. Fourth in the conference in state percentage at just around 61%. Jack Pastor has it from 40 yards out. The South Park goes to his left side. Comes to Ceramic. Ceramic, a pass in front that floats over the net. And RPI, closest man to it. They'll take it for now their first offensive possession. As we said, 10-0 RPI team, but an errant pass from Joseph Perry out of the goal. Coming to the near side by all the Bombers fans. So Ithaca takes it once again and a very strong start and a ride that played out very well for their defense as Derek Stout checks in here for the first time for the Bombers. He has it near their logo. The Bombers moving towards that left side. Niebuhr has it by that 40-yard line. It comes to Graham Brady, who has 11 points this season, 10 are goals. Brady to his right side, behind the goal. Comes to Niebuhr. Niebuhr back to his left. Ithaca resets once again. Still a lot of time on that shot clock. Brady comes to Stout. Stout can't hold on. Rolls all the way towards the far left corner. That's where Ceramic picks it up. The senior captain, 29 points, top 10 in the Liberty League. Spins to his left side, back to Brady. Brady nearing that restricting line, now driving to his left. Holding that stick shoulder with a hard shot and just swarms top right hand and all the way out of play. But Derek Stout back there to reset once again. RPI, their defense hasn't been able to get a handle on some of the ground balls that have been on the ground. Stout resets here for the Bombers. And at that point, a few ground balls, few chances. And RPI has not been able to really get out of this opportunity. 12-13 remaining in the first period. Bombers have had every possession. Stout looking to spin on the left side. Flutters his feet back towards that 40-yard line. A lot of communication from the RPI sideline right in their territory. And Stout, miscommunication, just threw the ball all the way towards the left corner. Him and Proctor, a miscue at RPI. Can they finally get going and look to get over midfield? Yeah, it's really interesting to see the mistakes that they've made early on in their defense. I mean, Ithaca was just swarming the net. And did they miss their shots? Yes, Joseph Perry being really stout in net. But RPI's offense needs to get going here. I mean, three minutes in, and we've had no action from the engineers. A strong defensive ride for the Bombers, but RPI now over the Bombers logo from right to left. On the road here, looking to move to 11-0. 
At the 40-yard line marker, they go to Luke Murphy, the grad senior, number one of the conference in points at 48. He's been spectacular. Here's a spin to the left side, a strong drive, a shot on goal. This one was poked away. Hunter Wallace on the defensive side. Now Ithaca with some momentum in transition. It's from Gillum to Proctor all the way on the left side. Just inside that 25-yard line marker, and both teams substitute out as Proctor slows things down. Proctor, eight goals this season, 11 assists that playmaker for this Ithaca offense, and he did that with Coach Long last season and has shown it here with Coach Tommy Pierce in his first season. The transition of coaches has been really interesting to see what this Ithaca offense has been able to do this season as opposed to last. Ibrahima with a pass to the right side of Ceramic. Ceramic can't hold on. Ball bouncing like a hot potato, and Ibrahima cannot pick it up, and it rolls out towards the right corner on the near side. 10.35 remaining in this first period, still no score. RPI, the number one team in shots, shots on goal in the conference, have only put one really that had a chance on their first possession. Ithaca, this ride on the defensive side here in their offense, they've held on possession for the majority of this first period. Yeah, I would say the majority of the time that's ticked down here in this first period has been on the Ithaca side of things, almost four whole minutes in that ozone. Here's Murphy with it on the near side, right by that corner, guarded by Ryan Marr. Marr getting his second start in a Bombers uniform. Had limited minutes during his freshman and sophomore season. Got that first start against Miss Accordia that came on the Wednesday win, 13-6 in favor of Ithaca. Cole Corrigan in goal for the Bombers. His 10th game started, pass in front, deflected away. Murphy was in pursuit, Marr picks it up. A long stick defenseman looking to move out of their corner. And Mars able to and comes all the way now to the near side to Jay Stocks, the sophomore. And Ithaca now back on their ride from left to right. 9.35 in his first period, no score. And a hard pass there to Ethan Flanagan, the freshman. He couldn't hold on to RPI right back with it. Over the logo once again is this engineer's squad. An offense that scored 19 goals four times this season. They've done it in a multitude of ways. That RIT win when they were ranked number two. That was a 10-9 win in overtime, Rihanna. That was a thriller that really showed this RPI team what they could do this season. Yeah, and pretty pre impressive what they've been able to do since the start of this season. Began the season ranked 15th by inside lacrosse, got an 11th nationally ranked win against York, and have won their next nine in a row, being the number two team in the country. How impressive is that? And here's Murphy, what he does so well from 25 yards out. A few spins, had nowhere to go. A fake shot there on the far side from Smith. Once again, a drive from Murphy now behind the goal. 30 on the shot clock here for the Engineers. A shot and a score. And the Engineers strike first. Tyler Lafini, his 16th goal of the season for the sophomore, had a spin and was fading back. It went to the right side of Corrigan. His stick not there in time. And with 8.42 in the first, RPI in front by one. That was a snipe right over the shoulder, and I don't even think Corrigan was expecting him to shoot it there. I don't. It didn't even look like he was ready in that net. Back to the face-off circle at midfield for Gillick and Venuto. That first one went to Gillick, and this time to the RPI side. Angela Venuto, the senior, 61%, went 13 for 24 against RIT in their last appearance. As Ithaca strips it away, Jared Sedlock, the junior, over midfield. And Ithaca in that right corner, back on the offensive side. Behind the goal is Charlie Niebuhr, as we said, 22 goals in this season. That's first on this bomber squad, John Ceramic, the other member and the senior with 16 goals. 8.05 in this first. RPI has already put one in the back of the net. And Ithaca looking to respond here on the offensive side. Here's Graham Brady, the hesitation. Drives to his right side, holds the stick with his right hand. Now behind the goal. May look to go back to his right side. He does pass in front, deflected away. Wanted ceramic in front of the goal. Brady looking to keep it in front of him. Gets pushed in the back of the far left side by the RPI sideline. All the way in the corner. So the Bombers will keep it there, and Brady will take it out from that sideline. <laughs> And what RPI is able to do too, they have a lot of very good long stick defensemen that are, can hold off in front and this Ithaca offense compared to RIT may not be that, that same kind of oomph and that same kind of bring that they can have overall. 
I think it's not necessarily that RPI's defense is incredibly powerful. It's just this offense is so potent that they spend a lot of time in their own zone. Pass to what a shot there on goal. Missed off to the left side, and then a penalty against RPI, so the Bombers will take it once again. That flag coming just near that 25-yard line marker outside the goal. And as Pastor was shooting that with his right hand, just pushed straight to the turf. So second penalty now against RPI, and a chance here for the Bombers and a man-up opportunity. Kyle Proctor will start with it, 60 seconds on that shot clock, and a big chance here for Ithaca to convert and tie this game up at one. RPI the third best penalty kill in the Liberty League. Ithaca needs to take advantage if they want to tie this one up. Ithaca playing ring around the rosy, right up top. They come to John Ceramic, now to Brady. He fakes it, back to Ceramic. Proctor to pump fake, Brady on the right side. Up top Ceramic, they're going all the way around. Ceramic one more time, fakes with his left hand, comes back to Niebuhr. Niebuhr wanted Stout, this ball poked away. And now three RPI defenders moving for, for the, the cross ball, and then one of them gets lower ended and slapped to the turf as it rolls in front of the goal. Perry picks it up, and RPI can clear it out of their zone. I liked what Ithaca was doing, trying to pass it around, maybe create some space down low, but RPI read it like a book. Here's the engineers once again. Rafini had that first goal with his 16th of the season for the sophomore. 6.15 left in this first period. <laughs> RPI second in goals per game, fifth in shot percentage, but what they do is they take shots at a high volume. Here's Luke Murphy once again on the left side. The points leader in the conference goes behind the goal. A fake pass in front from Smith. Now once again, they go back to Murphy. Murphy on the right side. A jump shot, a score! Give him 34 for the grad senior. Murphy had the hesitation, and from 11 yards out, jumped off his left foot. Bottom right-hand corner, right past Corrigan, and the engineers in front 2 to nothing with 5.55 left to go in the first. And my question is, Cam, where was the Ithaca defense? The space in front of the goal, there was no bomber defenders down low. Tough defense there. It almost looked like Wallace and Marr were screened as Murphy had that hesitation to the left side of the goal, back to the right. And an easy shot, and Corrigan wasn't really shielded by any defender as Venuto wins the faceoff. We're going to go down Main Street. Once again, RPI in transition, but poked away on a great defensive stop from Jared Sedlock. The, the ball on the floor once again, or the turf I should say, almost rolled towards midfield. But RPI can now reset here with Eric Ozier on that far right side. He scored the game winner against RIT last Saturday. Pass in front, poked away. Ithaca does take it. And now they'll move in transition. Max Warren, the sophomore defenseman. His ninth appearance on the year, all off the bench. And we talked about this first period, Rihanna, keeping things close and manageable for the Bombers. They've had the opportunities on offense. RPI has had less chances. They've just converted when it's mattered most. And 2-0 right now, if Ithaca can just convert one of these opportunities, it's a win at the end of one. Yeah, I mean, you have a really stout goaltender in that RPI net, but Ithaca not converting on their offensive opportunities has killed them so far, even though they've spent the majority of the time down by the RPI's net. Proctor was behind the goal. They reset to Sam Baker. Puts a defender right towards the turf. Now comes to Stout on the near right side. Behind the net once again, Ceramic. A pass in front, Proctor scores! They play tic-tac-toe. Ceramic to Proctor, and Proctor just tapped it into the back of the net. And Ithaca now down by one right on cue. The response for the junior, his ninth goal. It's 2-1 to one with 4.39 in the first. And Ceramic and Proctor, they kind of play tradesies as they switch off behind the net and right in front. And it works out really well for them. They know how to find each other down there. Really good response. And Proctor, we talked about his playmaking ability. Just getting in the right spot and Ceramic right around the goal. Tapped it right in front of Proctor. As RPI wins the faceoff, Venuto gets it and then gets just tripped down to the turf. Picks it up, resets in front of the Bombers' sideline as RPI once again from right to left. Here's Drew Teff with it, the sophomore. Hands off to Murphy, who has one goal so far. Rafini has the other goal. A two for RPI with 4.15 left in the first. Here's Cooper Manzi, comes to the left side, back to his right. And now Anthony Mazzella at the 40-yard line comes all the way back up top towards the logo. Here's the drive in. Ozier goes behind the net to Smith. 
25 yards out, some strong defense here from Hunter Wallace. RPI now on the far right side, and the ball dribbles all the way back up towards the logo. Strong defensive stand here so far for the Bombers, trailing by one. Here's Mazzella on the drive into his left side, a stutter step, now behind the net. On the defensive side is Martin, and then a pass in front, and this one rolls into the back of the net. And the Engineers now a three to one lead. And their offense, we talked about them, high shot percentage, but right now being a little bit more selective on the offensive side with the two goal lead. And it's paid off for them. Every time they've had an offensive drive, they've been able to convert Corrigan. He just looks like he's caught off guard a little bit. The space opens up in front of the net. RPI takes advantage. And that was Eric Ozier on the goal there. Back-to-back -back games, put his shots in the back of the net. He now is 12 in the season. As we said, the game winner against, at the time, number two ranked RIT. That was in overtime. Face off once again, it's won by R RPI. A pass to Murphy in front, a jump shot, this time too far over the net. But RPI, and looks like Smith, the first men to the ball, so they'll take it behind the net. 329 left in this first period. The engineers, so many different midfielders that could do a lot of damage. We've seen their top three so far, Ozier and Murphy, the two grad seniors. And the Bombers experienced that early. Here's Murphy from 15 yards out. A pass in front is intercepted from Gillum. And Gillum can now reset things as RPI can bring their right on the defensive side. This ball now poked away. Jace Dox almost loses it. Over the head pass. Gillum can't hold on. Now RPI has some numbers. It's a three on two for the Engineers. How will they play it here? Sprinting to the far right side is McDonald. Now comes to Murphy on the near left side by the 20 yard line. Murphy drives to his left, hesitates. A strong defensive stop there from Docks. The sophomore long stick, 17 ground balls, his 10th start of the year. 2.35 in this first period, a 3-1 RPI lead. How will the Bombers defense respond here in the final minutes? Cooper Manzi comes behind the goal. Back to Ozier one more time. Just had that goal. So good with his right hand, he comes to it right here. Spins back to his left. Strong defense on the shield from Gillum and company. And back to the 40 yard line with 30 seconds on this shot clock. Impressive defensive stand here so far for the Bombers, Rihanna, on this possession. Yeah, they've been really strong, just hounding the engineers. Looks for a pass in front there from Ruffini. And once again, it's Ozier. Ozier guarded by Gillum on that 25, 25 yard line. Swims to his left side, looks to go through the wickets of Corrigan, but Corrigan trapped it with his stick. Matter of inches there in front. He'll reset to Marr, and the Bombers back left to right with a minute 40 in this first period. Corrigan finally looked like he knew what that one was going to do. He was expecting it, and he made a fantastic save there, a huge defensive stop for the momentum of this game. The Bombers, the number seven team in the conference at the moment. They bring out some substitutions. Jack Pastore has one shot in front so far in this one. Not counted as a shot on a goal on the stat sheet. Here's Pastor with it from 25 yards out. Gets it stripped away. Ball rolls in the turf. And Graham Brady picks it up with a minute left to go in this first period. Brady back to Pastor. Stick is broken of an RPI player. They're down a man. They're bringing a substitution. And the stick is still in the middle of the field. Here's Ceramic. A shot is off the pole. Ceramic just coming in towards that right side. They saw the opportunity. And Ithaca will still hold on with Sramic the nearest player towards the ball. Yeah, that was Robbie McDonald for the engineers out there whose stick broke. As soon as it broke, he ran off the field, tried to get that sub out there, but that was a long time where there was a man down for RPI on that field. Graham Brady had it, picked it up, he lost it. Now he's back with it. A three on three for the Bombers. Brady towards his left side. Now behind the net comes the Ceramic. Has an open shot, but he's looking to hold on here for the final 25 seconds of this first period. Here's Niebuhr. The senior towards the right side of the goal. Has to reset, comes to Proctor, who has the only goal so far for the Bombers, but he loses it, rolls out of play. Now with 18 seconds, how will RPI push here in the final six of this first period? Rivers comes with it, a high pass, comes over midfield into the attacking zone. Smith, a great pass to Ogier in front. Now with six, a shot on goal, it goes past towards the left side and rolls out of play with five seconds. RPI will have one more chance behind the goal. Ozier bounces the feet. 
Now with three, two seconds. Ozier to his right side, a pass in front, and that will end the first here from Higgins Stadium. RPI three, Bombers one, in a defensive battle at the end of one. RPI came up to that 2-0 lead, Proctor the answer, and when you talk about the number two team in the nation, not a bad fight so far for the Bombers. Especially considering their momentum coming off a huge win against RIT. This Bombers squad did a really great job of putting the stops on when they needed to. Did RPI convert when they had the chance? Yes, they did, but I think it's been a lot of time in their own offensive zone. They should be proud of that. So that one goal so far for Proctor, and that's a duo right there that we've seen between Ceramic and Proctor. Both of them have playmaking abilities. Ceramic coming to, towards the right side of the goal. Just a quick pass to Proctor, and Proctor barely had that inside his stick, just slapped it in. Yeah, and these are two players that have played together for three years now. At this point in time, they should know where each other are on the field and work really well off each other. I will say Ceramic, he's probably had to make a little bit of adjustment to Proctor considering that his wingman and Jake Erickson departed last year and is now playing for the RIT Tigers in his grad year. And that RIT team, we speak of the schedule for the Bombers and what's coming up. These next two games, RPI number two in the nation, Union seventh and eighth in the nation in the coaches poll. Then the Bombers will also see St. Lawrence, nationally ranked team, and then they'll also get to see RIT. You look at this stretch coming up where Tommy Pierce's squad in his first season, this is as tough as it gets. And I mean, the Liberty League lacrosse scene is always stacked. You have teams out here in this conference that compete with Division I squads all of the time. And so it's really impressive what they're able to do and, and how they're able to compete in this conference. And it should be interesting to see if they can grab one of those ranked wins as the season winds down. And what a ranked win would do for the Bombers. And what RPI has shown is the ability to do that. They've beaten two top 15 teams and three top 25 teams so far took down Williams, who's number 20. That RIT game was kind of the one that was going to show, okay, who's in this top three right now? Who's the number one front runner? RIT still not a team to forget about in their ability down the stretch and how they've been able to own the Liberty League the last few seasons. But RPI a statement win, as we said, St. Lawrence number three in the country and Union at number seven. As Chris Soul comes out for the Bombers for the faceoff and Angelo Venuto. Period two, new 15 on the clock. Bombers now from right to left. RPI go from left to right. On a 45 degree Saturday, not a cloud in the sky here from the South Hill. Not often you see that in the month of March. Soul wins the faceoff for the Bombers, but rolls it all the way towards the left side here on the near side. And RPI will now take it with Venuto from left to right. As engineers offense, as we said, second in goals per game, they shoot at the highest volume in the conference. So far, they have not shown that, Rihanna. They've been able to be a little bit more selective on the offensive side. Yeah, and it's worked for them so far. They've converted on their chances. There have been a couple defensive stops that Ithaca's made, but also I think that goes to show what the Bombers' defense has been able to do. They're making them take good shots and really create that space. They're not taking any throwaway shots. Rafini, Murphy, and Ozier at the three to score for RPI. Here's a shot from Azella. This one's far and long. Ozier, the closest man to it. RPI keeps it. And Anthony Mazzella, another grad senior, nine goals this season, 10 points. Multiple grad seniors for RPI and a team that brings back a lot of talent, led by seniority. A screen from Ozier that goes to the other side for Ruffini, now spins back towards his left. Jared Sedlock on the defense, put his stick in the air and may have warranted an errant pass. And the Bombers can now move from right to left. An offense that put five shots on goal in the first two minutes. They held that whole offensive possession. Here's Chase Gillum with it. Backed up on the defensive side. Comes to the goalie in Cole Corrigan. Who's done his job so far. And there's Chase Docks. With the aggression seen from Luke Murphy on the RPI side, it's stripped away. The engineer's sideline loves that here on the road. When I mean, the Bombers got their stop that they needed, this ride from the engineer's defense has been very, very tough to beat. That RPI team over there on the sideline, they've been extremely vocal as well. And with Ithaca having the home crowd advantage, this stadium is packed here today for this number two team in the country, but RPI making noise over there. Trying to find their own energy when it matters most. Nice pass there from Cooper Manzi. Here's Murphy guarded by Sedlock, the Bombers' top short stick defender. Murphy a shot and a save from Corrigan. 
And then batted in front from Muller, looking to reset. This one tipped and just slithers past the goal. Sigh of relief. Corgan came out, Muller tipped it, and then Corgan dove forward. And the net was pretty much wide open. RPI will still reset here on the offensive side. 28 on that shot clock. Here's a drive from Manzi. Spins back towards that left corner where he was corralled and comes to Ruffini. Here's Osher, had that game winner on Saturday. A goal so far today, a shot. This, this one slithered through, no, it was ricocheted back to Osher. Off the knee and the post of Corrigan. A reset on that shot clock for the Engineers. Manzi once again, but Ryan Marr, that great defense, as we said, back-to-back -back starts, the first two of his career. Back to Manzi in front. Ball looking to poke it away, and Corrigan can save it in front of the net. And the Bombers now back on that ride. And Cole Corrigan, with two goals that he looked a little caught off guard now, he looks to be on his game now because the three saves he's made here have been absolutely phenomenal. He's been like a cat. Tough shots, that one from Osher before that ricocheted off the knee of Corrigan. Gillum loses possession here, but RPI, once again, they've shown their ride and their experience. They bring the aggression and that trap inside their defensive zone. 3-1 Engineers, just underway here in this second period. A shot in front, poked away. Good defense from Hunter Wallace. We've called him and Ryan Marr's name a lot so far in these first two periods. And Sedlock can finally get over the Ithaca logo. Now their offense has to get going. There's Kyle Proctor, has the only goal so far. The junior's ninth of the season, has 20 points. 11-24 to be exact in this second period. The number two ranked RPI Engineers. What an underdog story this is for the Bombers. Six and three, seventh in the conference. Not receiving top 25 votes. Here's Colin Adams. Look for that screen there from Derek Stout. Adams comes all the way to the far side. Here's a drive from Baker. Wanted to go to Ceramic, he's able to. Ceramic loses possession. A flag on the field to get some laundry right in front. And a free chance here for the Bombers. Derek Stout, the lefty, his ability to go to work. He'll spin it back to his right side if he can. As this one poked away, hot potato on the turf. And RPI will now take it. With that whistle blown, that flag, important to look at is Ithaca will now get this man-up opportunity. Their second of the game, 0 for 1 so far. Yeah, it just looked like the stick of an RPI defender got a little bit too close to the headgear of John Ceramic and a really aggressive touch there, but it's a physical game. And we talked about the defense and the offense and what RPI could do more. They've had a lot of games this season where they've had to score 15 plus. They've scored 19 goals four times. They've done it in a multitude of ways, but Ithaca is fighting right now, and that's what they've seen confidence with past seasons against RPI. They could play this team close. Yeah, and this is a possession right here that needs to bring this team a lot of energy. A goal here would mean big things coming down the stretch in the final minutes of this game. Here's Proctor. Back to the right side, Ceramic and Brady. That's been really that top of the crease for the Bombers as Brady loses possession, and RPI may be another chance to win up this man-up opportunity. They're on the ride once again. Ithaca not able to get back on defense. They have to substitute here. It's a four on three. A chance for the Engineers in front. A pass, a score! Way to draw it up, Engineers. Ogier had the pass and went right in front. And looked like it was Ty Stanek on the goal. We'll get the exact number in just a second, but RPI had that ride, saw the miscommunication. If it would be had three men back. And it will be Ty Stanek, his third goal of the season. And RPI in front, four to one with 10-10. We'll have to go in the second period. And how impressive for them to be a man down and to work so quick in transition to get down there. Not sure if that goal will count as a man down goal, but really impressive regardless how fast they were able to work in transition to make that happen. And the engineers win the face off. Back with it here on the attack. Just a great defensive stop for RPI, and then really getting on the ride over midfield. Had a long stick on the other side, and then saw Ithaca with three men back. Two quick passes got in front of the net. That's a big reason why this team's number two in the nation, taking advantage of mistakes, other teams' mistakes. And they've done that twice so far, two of their four goals in this three-goal lead. 
Yeah, this is certainly not a team where you can make mistakes because they are going to capitalize. You have to play a clean game, not try and do too much. And, and Ithaca just still figuring out their offense. It needs to get going here. Cooper Manzi was behind the net. Comes near side to Osier. Cole Corrigan just nearly both sides of the net. And a strong steal there. Aiden Martin, the senior, has 11 ground balls this season, can reset for Ithaca as Moore with a strong pass. The Bombers looking to break this ride that RPI has been able to swarm in so far. Almost a brick wall at midfield. Here's a strong pursuit, an acrobatic play. Trying to keep the feet in bounds. That was Lennon just trying to hold on on a tightrope. But RPI wins that battle once again. 8.45 left to go in this first half. A 4-1 Engineers lead. And a game that's just been emphasized by defense. Early on we saw the Ithaca offense shooting at a high volume. Now the possession arrow has really been with RPI for most of this second period. Hunter Walls in the defense here. Ozier looking to back him down. A jump shot. Oh, a sniper. Puts it into the top right-hand corner. And the Engineers a four-goal lead. And now we're going to pour it on here in this first half. Yeah, and there's a reason that Luke Murphy is third in the Liberty League in goals per game. It's because of plays like that. His ability to find the back of the net, to find almost those bar down type of plays. He's an incredible shooter, and he just showed it there. Second goal for him, 35th on the season. And now moving himself way further in that top points department. Up to 50 here in just the 11th game of this RPI season. Back in the face-off circle, RPI wins the battle. Angelo Venuto, fourth net category. Chris Sewell, sixth in face-off percentage. Strong lead for the Engineers. Cole Corrigan, some solid saves, but a lot of the times not even on Corrigan. RPI's ability to just get in front and find that mixture in front of the net. Not been a lot of screens for RPI. It's just been those quick passes. Their communication has been deadly. And their ability to open up the defense and create space in front of the net has been crucial as well because they get these wide open looks, these wide open lanes, and it's really easy to find the top corners and the bottom corners of the net when you have split the defense down low. Strong pass, strong shot. This one's long. Tyler Rafini once again had that first goal to open up this game. 7.38 remaining in this first half. And a stop that Ithaca desperately needs here on the defensive side. Here's a drive to the right side. We just talked about Tony Schiff before. And resets all the way up top here to Ogier once again. There's Max Ward on the defense. And there's some laundry once again on the field. We'll go against the Bombers. RPI soon to be in a man-up opportunity. And they get a goal before that chance. Here's a shot, a bounce shot, and it's in. And some celebrations as well on the RPI side. Swanson, his first goal of this one, puts one and just rolls it towards the back of the net. 6-1 Engineers with 7.06 in this first half. Zach Swanson, he had four goals last time this team played Ithaca and beat them handily. So I would expect him to, to know what he's doing out there on the Bombers field. Swanson just backpedaled and then skipped one past Corrigan, bottom right-hand corner. And this is the engineers team that people expected coming in. And a timeout called here as both teams will take a breather. One that the Bombers desperately need right now we said a lot of praise at the end of that first period, Rihanna, for this Bomber squad. Their defense was there. Corgan was playing well, shooting at a high volume. But in this second period, what's shown the most is just time of possession. RPI has held onto the ball, and they've not let go. And I think the engineers came out of that huddle into this second quarter with so much more energy. They look like they're clicking on a better pace, and they look like they're just higher energy right now. Not that the Bombers have given up, per se, but the RPI engineers finally starting to settle in, maybe starting to warm up, and their energy shows it. They are over there on the sidelines cooking. They're hyping each other up, and it's been fun to watch. And how could you not for this RPI team when you come off a win like that on Saturday? And talking to Chris Sewell for the Bombers, one of their face-off guys and the junior. 36 ground balls this season. He's coming to more of a leadership role. He said the Bombers feel like coming in a game like this, a Wednesday victory, RPI is riding high. It was our time to kind of slither in and maybe catch them off guard. But RPI right now has not come out 
lacking maybe the first two minutes, but they've changed that quickly. Well, and looking at what they did against RIT too, it was a pretty hot start for the engineers in that third, in that first period, but in the second, they didn't score any, and then they came out in the third. So the ability to make the adjustment and to come out stronger than you were the period before, that's what's made the difference for the engineers, and they've been much higher energy here in the second. A lot higher energy, and just holding the ball on the offensive side, their communication, and you can even say too, the Bombers may have saw, look, RPI shoots at a high percentage. They want to have a high volume. They've been more selective, and that can maybe, you know, ruin the chances for the Bombers. Their defense getting tired, and just the constant passing and the movement from RPI. It's not been long shots from 25 yards out. They're getting in front of the net, high percentage, and being able to really just move past ball screens and connect. And RPI using the full range of the shot clock to their advantage as well. There's been quite a few times where that shot clock has been taken down lower than 30 seconds and it's been pretty impressive to watch the Bombers defense work but at some point they get tired and they lose track of the ball and that's when RPI can capitalize. Back to the face off circle here for both sides. Seoul once again and Venuto. Venuto wins the battle once again and Seoul yet to win in that department. Venuto goes coast to coast gets it stripped away on a solid defensive stop from Hunter Wallace. Now Ithaca in transition. Coming out with some fire out of the timeout. Maybe some extra juice for this offense, their home opener. Proctor hands off to Graham Brady. That substitution for the Bombers, get their midfielders back on the field here, looking to reset. Pastor out there as well, Ceramic and Niebuhr. The two of them, their top goal scorers. 6.22 left to go in this first half. Some strong defense out in front there for McDonald. Almost poked it away. And it comes to Pastor on the far right side of the Bombers' sideline. Pastor, stutter step inside, comes to Ceramic. Ceramic, very strong lefty shot. This one too long and a flag thrown. Proctor, the nearest man of the ball. We'll see who this flag is going to be on. Looks like it is against RPI. We'll see the quick substitution here from both sides. And Proctor will have it on the near side, right towards that corner from about 25 yards out. So a man up chance once again here, third of the game for the Bombers. One of them though, RPI was able to result a turnover, go on the other end and score. Yeah, in this possession, like we said for the Bombers, you have to take advantage of these man off opportunities. They've given you three already and you haven't converted. Now's the time, you gotta get some energy going. Here's Niebuhr. We're going to wind up and fake that shot. Comes to Ceramic. Proctor with the only goal so far. Big chance here for Ithaca with 5.43 in this first half. Proctor steps back. Look to fire. Came to Stout. Stout a good fake. Comes down the lane. Here's Ceramic one more time. 20 on that shot clock. Proctor a strong shot. Poked away. Perry had the save. Here's Niebuhr in front. Saved one more time. And the ref has to get in front. And Niebuhr was too far inside. And that's why Joseph Perry is the top goaltender in the conference. Two strong saves, and Proctor had a lot of fire behind that shot, couldn't connect. Yeah, and like you said, Cam, a reason that he is a finalist and on the watch list for the T. Wharton Award, because he's absolutely outstanding. He's been the backbone of this team and a large reason why RPI has such a great goals against average. I mean, they're only allowing 8.8 .8 goals a game. That's really impressive, and a large reason is because of that man in net right there. And Perry's a junior. He's also been a three-year starter, a lot of appearances, 120 saves this season, had 24 against number two RIT, so he had his biggest test last Saturday, and so far here, not has been too much for him. Here's a shot on goal, laser from Sean Smith, save from Corrigan, and Corrigan a long ball. Here comes Ithaca on what an aggressive chance. Gillum to Sedlock, right in front to Proctor. Can Proctor keep it in front? No. And RPI on a dangerous chance wins yet another battle, even when they were caught lacking. The engineers back on the other end. Corrigan couldn't save this one. And Luke Murphy, once again, his third goal of the game. Give him 36 on the season. 
And then a possession right there where Corrigan had the long ball. You thought Ithaca had that goal chance in front. Quickly RPI back on the other end, not letting Ithaca substitute, and Murphy right there to connect. And that's gotta be frustrating for Corrigan because that pass came right under his nose and suddenly it was in the back of the net. So super frustrating if you're Cole Corrigan in net. 7-1 RPI with 420 left to go in this first half. And now six unanswered goals as well for the engineers after Kyle Proctor, or five and a half, I should say, after Proctor made this a 2-1 game. Strong defense from Hunter Wallace, picking a stick away from Venuto. The first face-off that he's had trouble with all afternoon. Now the Bombers are gonna squash this momentum that RPI has held on to and stop the bleeding. Head of the halftime locker room with a little bit of a bright spot. Here's Sam Baker, the sophomore midfielder, have not called his name too much. 11 points this season, had one goal last time out against Missacordia. Here's Ibrahima, who was fantastic in the opener against St. John Fisher. Has 11 points this season, six goals. Comes to Proctor, has the only goal so far. And they give him two. Proctor lost his stick and lost the ball. Perry held on right in front of the net. And that time, Perry didn't even have to do much. The defense was from Caleb Aswari right in front. Luke Murphy on the other end for RPI. It was almost just batted down from some strong defense from Ryan Marr. Now the engineers can reset once again. Clock's their best friend with three minutes left to go in this second period. RPI defense has totally changed up. They've been super strong in this second period and Will McGrath on Kyle Proctor, that matchup, a little bit of a size difference there, 6-1 to 5-10. That's worked really well for the engineers, Proctor being their lead offensive guy in this one and he's been stopped ever since McGrath has been on him. And Corgan is stopped right there on a strong shot from Ruffini. He has one goal so far. RPI has been able to do it in a multitude of ways. Four different goal scores to begin. And then Murphy, as we've said, with the three goals. The engineers still with it here. Clock winding down now at 2.30. 25 on that shot clock. Behind the net is Cooper Manzi. 14 points this se season, even between points, goals, and assists. Here's a hard shot from Ruffini once again. This one's too long. Tipped off the Bombers, and Ozier behind the net. RPI another chance. They've won three two goal games this season. They've won games by more than eight goals four times. Rafini once again, this shot poked away from Corrigan. Off his knee, used the body. That's his fourth save and a big one. And with two minutes, Ithaca back on the ride. Marl loses his stick right at midfield and RPI takes it. It really seems like every time where Ithaca gets a nice stop, a strong pass from Corrigan over the other side of the field, RPI has a response for everything that comes their way. Yeah, Ithaca has had huge problems in this second with their breakout. I mean, barely being able to make it cra uh, over that half field line and even inside 25 yards, they, they haven't seen a whole lot of action inside, inside that goal crease, inside their ozone. A shot there from Ozier that was just an air mill. Went all the way towards the far left side corner. His fourth shot of the game, only one's been on goal. And that one was his goal. 135 in this first half, RPI, that six goal lead. Here's a chance for Manzi, too far. Tried to go top shelf past Corrigan, he could not. The engineers holding on to these possessions, almost some deja vu to what we saw in the first two minutes of this game for the Ithaca offense on this side. Manzi up top with Ozier and company. Manzi, two shots on goal on this possession with a minute 15 left to go. Ozier, a nifty pass in front, poked away from Sedlock, and Ozier went to the submarine pass, came up empty. Ithaca back on the line here, what could be their final possession of this first half? 58 seconds and counting, whistle blown. And both sides will take a second here for a bomber timeout. So 60 on that shot clock, 57 seconds left to go for this bomber's offense. And this possession here, you really almost think it's a must score right now. You have to hold on to this clock. Don't want to give RPI one more chance. And these turnovers have been costly for the bombers, leading that department by seven. 
Yeah, this is a significant offense that struggles to score goals. If you look at their losses, just four against Nazareth and even against Vassar, seven goals didn't break that double digit point mark. That's something that you're going to have to worry about if you're coming down the stretch and moving into the locker room. You don't want to come out of halftime just flat. So this Bomber offense needs to get a goal here before they go into the locker room at halftime. Maybe have a little bit of energy, a little bit of hype. 14 turnovers for the Bombers, and Kyle Proctor has been that one bright spot on the offensive side. We saw early on John Ceramic put three shots right in front of the net in that first period. And was not be able to do too much here in this second period. We've seen two shots as well from Charlie Niebuhr. Those are their top three guys that have been in front. There's been some opportunities, but it's converting those right now. And that's what Tommy Pierce is probably telling his team in this timeout spot. Hey, we have to get a goal right now. How much that means. Yeah, this offense needs to get going. And for the energy, I mean, you saw RPI come into the second period and just overtake the Bombers with the speed, the energy. They looked like they were more intense than the Bombers. And... It's paid off in the form of goals for them, but right now you have to get this goal to move into the locker room and have some energy. The emphasis is there here for the Bombers. 57 seconds out of their timeout. Both teams came out of their huddle and towards the offensive zone for the Bombers. And now the refs blow a whistle once again. You wonder, did RPI just call one of their own timeouts? But the Bombers also will come out here with Really the, the same three attackmen that have been the bread and butter this year. And we can also go back to Rihanna just talking about this game right now, six goal lead for RPI, what Ithaca has in that second half, and then what is for them to come in these next few games that are coming up. They have a week where they'll, they'll face RIT on a Wednesday and then St. Lawrence on a Saturday, both at home. A lot of challenges ahead, and this is kind of the taste that Ithaca may feel in the next four games that are coming up. Yeah, and you have to take advantage when you have these huge ranked opponents that you're playing. You have to take advantage of the fact that, hey, at least you're playing at home. You don't have to travel to their building or their field, rather, and take on their crowd as well as their team. I mean, they're already so strong teams. you got to take advantage of your home crowd. And right now, the Bombers just looking like they're falling a little flat right now. And big difference is 21 shots for RPI to Ithaca's 12 and eight of those shots for the Bombers came in that first period, so a big difference here. And one more stat for you, Ithaca only three shots on goal. Big factor here. Out of timeout, 50 seconds, Bombers have it here on the attack. Niebuhr, right up top of that 25 yard line marker, gets hit hard, now he's double teamed, has to get rid of it, he does. Here's a pass to Proctor, back down in the corner. Comes all the way back up top, one more time to Niebuhr, Niebuhr to Brady. 33 seconds, 40 on that shot clock. If they could, could hold for one shot here to finish off and end of the halftime break. Ceramic has 16 goals this season, spins back to his left, now towards his right. Ithaca resets once again. Can't waste too much time here. Have to find your shot soon. Brady, a good screen. Shot in front. Eber, a bounce shot. Rolls past Perry to the right side. Proctor, the closest man to it. Now 11 seconds for the Bombers. Really their final chance here. Proctor from behind the net on the right side. A spin fake. Here's Brady. A shot is too long. Top left-hand corner. Now four seconds and the final chance for Ithaca. First 30 minutes have come and gone here from the South Hill. Ceramic pass in front. Proctor tipped it in. Are you kidding me? Four seconds, you think the halftime break is coming up and it's going to be a 7-1 game. But no, the Bombers put one through. And Ceramic and Proctor, the bright spots. A pass that went over the top of the goal. Proctor just tapped it in. And it will be two goals for the Bombers in the first 30 minutes. What a buzzer beater there, and that's exactly what this Ithaca team needed. If you're the Bombers, you're breathing a sigh of relief right now as you head into that locker room. You're able to say, okay, what worked there? What, what went well for us? And try and exploit that here moving into the second half when you can make those adjustments. Well, a seven to two game after this first two periods of play. Still two ticks on the clock here. So there will be a faceoff at midfield, and that will finish off the first half, but as Rihanna said, a buzzer beater that means a lot. Few shots on net, and then that final chance right there, that was almost a prayer, and RPI kind of just got caught lacking, thinking that there was no chance. It's the ball on the turf here, here's the face off. 
And that will wind down the first half of play here from Higgins Stadium. So RPI 7, Ithaca 2 after the first 30 minutes. And Kyle Proctor, the two goals for the Bombers. How Ithaca respond in this second half. 10 minutes until we head to that second half. RPI, the number two team in the nation. Can Ithaca take down unbeaten and come back here on their Liberty League home opener? Well, you'll stick with us. Halftime show coming up. You're listening to Ithaca Men's Lacrosse here on WICB. I am. We have 9.30 left in the half, so I'd say if you bring it... I think I might be on air, by the way. Uh, I think if you bring it um, to two minutes left, so give it to us, or give it to us in eight minutes. Um, 1.57. All right, sounds good.
Ready whenever. Uh, we have 30 seconds, so send it right after this promo. Perfect, thank you. Crow alongside Cam Mana. We're through two periods of play here from Higgins Stadium. RPI up seven to two against the Ithaca Bombers, the number two team in the country, showing off their offensive prowess, Cam. A really strong start for them. We saw their response from that first period about five minutes in to now. Over 25 shots that they've taken so far. Yeah, and they get off to a quick start here. Working it all the way around the key. A shot towards Corrigan goes wide of the cage and out of play. But Murphy is the closest man to it. He'll regain possession and kick things off here from behind the net. And a really spectacular game so far for Murphy. Three goals, now over 50 points in the early season, just 11 games in. He's the bright spot of this team, the big engine of why they're the number two team in the country. This offense, too, really showing off there in that second period. Seven goals climbing out to a six-goal deficit for the majority of the second period, Cam. Yeah, and we saw the Bombers just be able to crawl back at about four seconds left on a pass from Ceramic to Proctor right in front of the goal that Proctor kind of just tapped in when RPI was flat-footed, almost thought they were going to the halftime break. So you never know if that could play costly down the stretch here. But the big factor, how will Ithaca respond on the defensive side early on in this third period? Bombers keeping it close in period one, three to one. But like we said, RPI climbing out to that 7-2 lead in period number two as they swing it around the cage here. Trying to find the lane, working it in is Murphy. He shoots one, that rolls out of play. Oger is the closest one to it, so he'll regain possession on the far side corner. It's a strong aggression so far for RPI, but we've seen them be very selective with this shot clock. Working down the shot clock, trying to tire out Ithaca's defense. This is Murphy. Over to Oger, who bobbles it. Scooped up by Hunter Wallace. He's been fantastic defensively in this one as he gets out quick in transition. Tosses it over to Proctor, who shoots one towards the net and long. Niebuhr is the closest one to it. He'll get things going here for the Bombers in their first offensive possession of the second half. A really smart shot there from Sedlock because you can almost say that he rushed it, but he also saw Niebuhr on that far left side and knew that if he was able to miss it long towards the left, the Bombers would have that possession back either way. Gianuzzi trying to work it past Kalkasin. Proctor behind the net, dipping and diving. Finds Niebuhr far side. Working into the zone. Niebuhr goes for Proctor behind the net. Pops for Brady. Working it past RPI's defense behind the net again for Proctor. Swinging it all the way around the cage, trying to find a lane. RPI's defense playing lockdown. Gianuzzi with it. Pastor will try now. And a shot goes long over the top of the crossbar. That was John Ceramic. And now six seconds on the shot clock here, so a quick chance for the Bombers. Have to get it in front. 12.48 to go. Four seconds left on the shot clock, and the Bombers will throw it away for the engineers. Joseph Perry, the engineer's goaltender, will chase after it and get things going here for another RPI offensive drive. And just a long possession there for the Bombers where they were not able to really get one shot off. We saw Ceramic just inside trying to flutter one in front, but... You mentioned it, Rihanna, this RPI defense really playing lockdown, and their long stick defensemen have been much of the problem in, in front of the goal. 
and Ithaca's defense, offense, excuse me, in that second period, I mean, they really struggle against this RPI defense. Just 16 shots for RPI, five for Ithaca. So really struggling to get shots through to the net. In front was Murphy. He was pushed to the turf and shot bounces wide of the cage, but the rest didn't see anything they didn't like. So Ithaca regains possession. Corgan with it, passes it over to Mayer. Breaking over half midfield, that's Sedlock. Trying to get their offense set as their subs come in and out. Getting their attack men and midfielders on the field are the Bombers. Baker comes on out. Adams with it now, guiding traffic out there. Adams trying to find one of his teammates. He goes behind that for Gillum. Excuse me, that's Ceramic. Proctor now with it. Both of them opting to be behind the cage. This is Baker. Finds Stout. And a great stop by the RPI defender, a stick from Aswari. Read that pass like a book and scooped it out for RPI's second offensive drive. And then now really no ride here from the Bombers on their backside with the defensive side and really easy for RPI to get over. But another turnover by the engineers, if they can get right back to work on offense is Ceramic corrals it on the, far, on the near side. And you have to get Ceramic and Niebuhr going and just put them in space, some quick screens and get give them the opportunity to try to just put some shots in front. For the Bombers now, it's not even about Shots on goal percentage, it's just sh more shots at a higher volume. Those are your two offensive prowesses out there if you're the Bombers. And they've been quite quiet today aside from a couple of good passes from Ceramic to Proctor. Baker with it. Tries to work through a shot from all the way downtown. Gianuzzi, matching at bottom corner past Perry. Really good shot there for the Bombers. It was just that quick spin. And that bounce shot just slithered past Perry towards that left-hand corner. And a really good response there for the Bombers right on cue. Some more aggression. And Cam, we talked about it, how getting that late period tally in period number two and going into the locker room at halftime, that's got to give you some energy. Bombers come out and convert early. And it plays a big factor, too, and also to just get this first goal of the second half can set you up in a, in a good spot momentum-wise. We saw RPI, the first two goals of the game, and that's six minutes in, it was really all of them. Really dominant in the face-off circle as well. If you want to look, 10 face-offs won in that first half from the engineers, just one for Ithaca, and that's huge for momentum, Cam. Huge for momentum, and now what it has to turn to is the defensive side, and that's where the Bombers have struggled. It's now trying to result these into stops. Those face-offs, when you're not getting out to those fast starts, can be hard when you're on your heels. The Ithaca defense will get to work now with 50 seconds left on the shot clock. 9.33 on game clock here in period number three. Hard hit there by Michael Gillum, trying to dispossess the engineers. This is Swanson with it at the top. Goes to Mazella. He's been quiet, had a goal in the last game. Swinging it around the cage here, trying to find some space. The Ithaca defense spread out. Here's Swanson at the top. A great save, though, by Corrigan. And they get out quick in transition. Bombers working it all the way down the field. Ceramic will slow it down. Allows his offense to set up. Really good save there from Corrigan and a really strong shot that was almost shielded. Corrigan was kind of batted in front. Didn't have that complete view. And it was starting to go top left-hand corner and just a quick stick fake there from Corrigan. So the Ithaca offense can get to work yet again after that third goal here in period number three. It came at t with 10-18 to go. It's Gianuzzi trying to work it in. He had a goal in his last game too. Pastor, he's pushed to the turf and scooped up by the RPI defense. It's a soiree. Another good stick.
Ithaca trading blows with RPI, dispossessing the engineers out in front is Niebuhr, he's turned away by Perry. And yet again, Oswari scoops it up and tries for the engineers breakout, a huge turn. They turnovers right and left, Cam. And Ceramic, just such a smart pass to Niebuhr. Niebuhr saw it the whole entire way, almost felt himself that wide open and thought about the shot before holding on to the pass. Had to be that quick turnaround because he was right in front, but couldn't connect. Back-to-back -back possessions with the Bombers. Some opportunities they want back. So far in front of that last RPI defender. A shot he's going to be thinking about when he goes to bed tonight, Cam. And a really just strong pass as well, though. You look at that bright spot. What Sram was able to do, see him from very a far distance. Colton Adams working in. He goes far side post. Perry is not happy about that one, but Colin Adams. A goal in his last game. He'll extend his streak. And so many unanswered goals in this third period, what that does for a team. We've talked about it mostly in this second half. All about momentum right now when you're trailing coming into a half by five goals. A very strong start for the Bombers. Just some more aggression, some more swagger on the offensive side, and it's showing. And to be able to come in and do this against the number two team in the country where you have your chance at halftime to come in and make those adjustments, and the Bombers have done it. RPI gets right out to an early offensive jump, though, turned away by Corrigan, a great save. Shot from Zach Swanson. He's been a hawk at the net. RPI's defense, offense, excuse me, will reset. Mazzella with it. Finds Swanson. Down low. And Murphy with his third of the day, give him the hat trick. Over the shoulder of Cole Corrigan. And Murphy once again, two of those goals have just been those jump shot goals and him being on that far or near side right post and being able to just come out about 10, 12 yards out, bounce off his left foot and really tough for Corrigan to read that. And he's just really gone towards that near side post on Corrigan and he's not been able to get there in time to save it. That was really a one-on-one -on -one shootout situation with Corrigan and Murphy where he was just right in his grill and didn't know where he was going to go. It's hard to react when you have an athlete out there on the field. The face-off is won by Ithaca. And with 6.42 here to go, 8-4 to four score, Engineers in the lead. And right now, this possession means a lot, too, for the Bombers. Their offense is in a groove right here, and you want to stay in that groove for as long as possible. Trying to keep things going, be efficient on offense. This is Ceramic. Hounded by engineer defenders. Proctor finds Baker, who will spread his offense out and try and get back to work. Stout goes one-on-one, -on -one, batted down to the turf by Baker, and that will roll out of play. Joseph Perry will pick it up behind RPI's net. And once again, turnover's a big issue right now, and it's costing the Bombers on an offensive possession. They are looking to take their time and having multiple opportunities. Now 18 turnovers for the Sithika team. And going on into halftime, that margin was 14-9, to not in favor of Ithaca, and... We talked about it, Cam. This Ithaca offense, they struggled to get over midfield at one point in that second period. Hasn't been the case so far, but largely when you make those mistakes against a team that's as good as RPI, those will haunt you. And the big part of that, too, in a game like this, when you're also down by four goals, it's how you respond. And you can't have that many mistakes now when you're already trailing. The mistakes were the first half. That can't happen here in half number two. RPI getting back to work, already working really close into Cole Corrigan. Down low is Murphy, he swings one down low, almost like a softball pitch and trickles into the net just past Corrigan's feet. So a 9-4 to four lead for the RPI engineers with 5.04 to go here in period number three. And Corrigan right there, it almost bounced off his stick. He had it trapped between his legs, and it just rolled under him, and he almost tried to sit on the lacrosse ball. Such a tough spot, an unlucky bounce there for Corrigan to be able to almost hold on. Just a matter of inches right there for RPI's ninth goal. 
So the engineers responding right back to the Bombers' offensive drive here in period number three. Engineers winning the faceoff yet again, and you want to talk about not getting out to fast starts. This is what Ithaca has struggled with all game and has really hurt them on the offensive side. And a lot of the games this season for the Bombers, and we talk about Coach Pierce's new offense compared to Coach Long's, who was here for over that 30-year period, Pierce is more free-flowing, and it's getting the Bombers to understand that type of offense, be in your right spots, and work through that chemistry. And seeing improvement here in the second period, but not enough, and there's Brady. And he'll go straight down low past Perry. Give the Bombers five. The crowd here at Higgins Stadium fired up. Graham Brady with his first of the day. We just talked about getting out to an early jump and a fast start, Cam. Graham Brady making things look easy and working real quick. And his 11th goal of the season, he's had some opportunities this afternoon, and that's really right on cue. It just talks about responding to your mistakes. How can you get back on the board and keep this game as close as possible? So four different goal scorers now for the Bombers. As RPI wins yet another faceoff and gets to work in their offensive zone, trying to respond right back. A little tug of war here in period number three, four eleven to go. RP up, up nine to five. Here comes Rafini. He's been quiet, just one so far on the day. He's had eight goals in his last four games. Very impressive on the offensive side for the engineers. There's a Swanson swing it past Corrigan. That'll go nearer the near side post. Strong shot there for Swanson. Already has one goal in this one. Just missed. Ogier will get back to work. Another shot. Bringing off the leg of Corrigan and out of play. Murphy will get us back going again. Behind his cage, Murphy finds Swanson. From Azella, swing it over the crossbar. A laser of a shot almost straight into the shot clock behind RPI's goal. And this is a stop you need for the Bombers. Three straight shots, three solid saves. So 55 seconds to go on the shot clock. 3.30 to go here in number three. RPI swinging it around, trying to tire out that Ithaca defense. They almost got the stop there. That was the stick of Docks. And Cole Corrigan making the saves look easy there in net. Huge save there for Corrigan. His stick was on his right side. Had to spin it back to his left on a shot that had a lot of mustard behind it. Cole Corrigan, the grad student, his eighth of the day. One of those goalies that allows about 9.59 goals per game. And he's right at that mark right now. See if he can remain strong for the rest of this game. Gianuzzi will start us on the breakout. Trying to find his teammate. This is Proctor. On the left side of the field behind, behind the IPI cage. Brady now with it. He scored the last goal. Pastor. Gianuzzi chasing after it, but scooped up by our RPI. And talk about those turnovers, those ground balls at the halfway mark. They were very much in favor of, Ithaca, of RPI, excuse me, seven ground balls more than Ithaca. And a quick penalty there against RPI. It looks like so the Bombers get possession right back. One of the Ithaca mid midfielders shoved to the turf. This is Lennon. He'll run right off after he hands it off to Proctor. Waiting for his attackman to get on the field. Derek Stout will join him and tries to get set up. And a really solid period so far for the Bombers. Came into this period with 12 shots, now with 20. Now eight shots on goal as a team. Big improvement from that first half. When you're playing the number two team in the country, you got to play intense, and they've done that here in period number three. Proctor behind the net for Pastor. He's ducking and dodging. He goes top shelf. Jack Pastor. 
started in the last five games, five goals on the season, give him six. And he had some, a lot of energy and a lot of emotion after that goal, understood what that possession meant right there. Buck 22 in his third, he had a three goal game. And now you can start to feel this momentum shifting, the crowd into it, the Bombers are right back into it. And it really just came down to, your offensive chances have to be smart, can't have those turnovers, that's been the shift. And Cam, we talked about it, when you have the opportunity to play those huge ranked teams at home, you gotta take advantage of that home crowd, you gotta take advantage of that home energy, and the Bombers have done it here in this period. And they've really just changed the complexion of this game out of the halftime break, stopped the momentum, ended that first half with a goal, and they've won this third period from top to bottom. I wanna remind you that the engineers haven't lost yet this season. Ithaca still looking for their first conference win. If they were to get it here today, might give them a really good shot at an at-large bid down the stretch if they get to the point where they aren't in contention to win the Liberty League. And you usually see multiple at-large bids out of this, you know, whole entire conference. And right now it makes a lot of sense. Three teams in the top 10. The Liberty League, such a tough conference to play in as Watley tries to get to work against the Bomber defense. Gillum is on him though. Swings it behind the net for Ozier. This is Mullen. Back for Mur Murphy on the near side. Murphy trying to work around his numerical counterpart in Docks. And he gets a shot through, but Corrigan stands tall. Bounces off his kneecaps and scooped up by RPI. And that'll be the buzzer here for period number three, a nine to six score with RPI still in the lead and the Bombers with a huge offensive showcase here in period number three. And they won that period four to two. RPI did take more shots, they had more shots on goal, but the big factor here, four saves for Cole Corrigan and they were able to hold on to possessions, not those turnovers that we saw in that first half. We saw multiple times where the Bombers were in a groove on the offensive side. That one extra pass just rolls away, and we've seen that really shift in this third period, but at the end of the day, that third period means nothing without this final 14 minutes. You can't let your highs get too high right now and your lows get too low. You have to come into this fourth period right now, reset, stay together, and try to hold on to any sliver of momentum, because at the end of the day, this that whole period could have woken up that RPI team as a whole. Yeah, and if you're Tommy Pierce in that huddle, there's still a three-goal deficit right now. You got to get to work and keep cutting it down. Very impressive what the Bombers were able to do, though. Seven to two coming out of that halftime period. I don't know what Gatorade they were drinking there in the locker room, but they seemed to come out with a lot more energy and really worked hard here in this third period. And the one change you also want to see is in the face-off department, the Bombers are two for 18 RPI 16 for 18. They've been able to dominate in that department, hold on to possessions, and be able to start out hot right, af right off those face-offs. What Angelo Venuto has been able to do all season, fourth in the conference, that's where this game starts. You start in that face-off circle. If Ithaca, if Ithaca excuse me, can change that, just the tiniest bit in this fourth period. Few face-off wins, get themselves on offense to begin and not rely on a defensive ride. That could change a lot here down by three. Yeah, and RPI, I mean, that's their game, right? When you're the number two team in the country, you've got to push the pace, and that starts in the face-off circle. And for Ithaca, if you're losing face-off after face-off after face-off, that can be really demoralizing. And the big thing here, too, is if they are able to not win these face-offs, which what we've seen a lot is you can't let RPI get that quick inlet pass and then move quickly into the attacking zone. We've saw RPI multiple times in that first half do that on multiple occasions. Working ch quick in transition, we've seen it happen a couple times throughout this game as we get set for quarter number four. This is Wallace at the faceoff. He loses it to Venuto. And RPI working from left to right here in the black and red jerseys. Getting their changes off. Ruffini holds off and tries to get to work. This is Mazella. Working on the far side. Swings it over to Smith. Mazella trying to work it in. A hard shot towards the net goes wide of the cage. But closest to it is Oger, so he'll get things back going here again. Ithaca defense needs a stop here. 
Keep cutting down that deficit for the Bombers. Mazella. Setting his offense up. This is Smith. Working it around. Murphy, hard shot to Corrigan. He handles it. The brick wall, Cole Corrigan, he's made some massive stops in the second half, Cam. This whole fourth period is going to rely on, on Corrigan having those big saves and stopping all PI possessions. And right there, he started a high note. Corrigan has really been a warrior right between the pipes. Those goalkeepers, the backbone of this team. The last line of defense here is Ithaca will try for their first offensive drive of the quarter. Adams will get to work. And our errant pass was looking for John Ceramic and went long on the sideline. Not a mistake that you can make here in this fourth quarter. Those are the, those are the mistakes we saw in that first half. Those quick passes where you feel the offense getting into a, drew, a groove and that just stops the whole entire possession. A miscue that you can't make against a very good RPI team. As they get set, taking it over the half field mark, a flag is thrown down on the field. Looks like it'll be on Ithaca. RPI has a free shot here. They'll swing it long in the net over the crossbar. And now if you're Ithaca, you put yourself in another dampering hole where now you're in a man down opportunity, have to get a stop on the defensive side. This is a spot that you don't want to be in after a period that started off with a big save from Corrigan, a good ride on the offensive side. Now you kind of have to shift that mentality. So RPI with their first man up chance of this one. That flag thrown on Sam Baker, he comes out of the contest and on the far side RPI will kick it off for their man up advantage for one minute. This is Manzi. Over to Mazella. RPI. Swinging it around the horseshoe. Getting in really close to Corrigan there. Swinging it towards the net with Swanson. A hard shot. Thirty-nine seconds to go on the shot clock. Twelve forty-one left in this one. Smith swings it back to Rafini. Murphy now. Playing back and forth, tic-tac-toe, Murphy at the top here. Finds Ruffini. Trying to work it down low, Ithaca with a great stick. That was Michael Gillum. A huge defensive stop, 10 seconds left on the penalty, and they'll get the breakout here. Working in transition, this is Sedlock. On the near side to pass Storr and to Proctor, excuse me, and lets that man down advantage, man down disadvantage, excuse me, tick down, and finally we're back to even strength so the Bombers can get to work. And you love that ability there for the Bombers to just slow things down, get a great stop at the defensive side, and Michael Gillum's ability, we haven't called his name much, but in that first period, some big force turnovers, just did it again right there. Bombers with the second best penalty kill in the Liberty League. Showing it off why there, even against the number two team in the country. A very athletic group. Ceramic will corral it behind his own net and try and get this Bombers offense going as Gianuzzi was dispossessed. Picking his pocket there was a soiree. He's been a hound on defense. Multiple stops when it's mattered most and really the second possession of this period where the Bombers just get it threatened away from a turnover. Rafini goes far side with it. Murphy works it in, top shelf. Tyler Rafini with its second of the day. A 10 to six lead for the RPI engineers with 10.59 to go here in quarter number four. And that one's gotta hurt if you're the Ithaca Bombers. Yeah, it does not feel well right there, especially after the, you know, stop on a man down where you get the whole defense to come together when it mattered most, probably their best defensive stand of the game, then you get back on the offensive side, and then that one turnover trickled into that goal. Now a four-goal game. This is where you have to kind of stop the bleeding, but the face-off's an issue. 
So Hunter Wallace and Venuto will go at it, and Venuto wins yet another faceoff. The engineer is so dominant in the draw controls. Engineers getting to work here, but Hunter Wallace says keep it out of there. Watley goes behind his own net for Murphy. 10 to 6 lead for the engineers with 10 24 to go. 47 seconds left on that shot clock. A miscue by the engineers and comes over midfield. So Ithaca gets to take possession of this one. Sedlock will start us off. Stout to Proctor. On the near side is Niebuhr. He's been quiet. Adams now working it down towards the logo. Proctor behind his own net. Finds Adams again. 53 seconds left on the shot clock as Ithaca gets to work. Baker trying to find one of his teammates. He does it in Stout. Stout to Proctor behind his own net. Now for Baker, a hard shot down into the turf. Really good pass there, great movement, and Baker has a goal so far. They found him up top. That playmaking ability from Proctor has two goals so far, but has had some outstanding passes. Still swinging it around the cages, this Ithaca offense. Proctor! From a great pass, Charlie Niebuhr behind his net. A laser of a pass, and Proctor gets his second of the day. We've seen two assists from Ceramic to Proctor, give Niebuhr one to Proctor, and that one very similar to that second goal that Proctor had to end that first half, just sitting right in front about 10 yards out, and that quick handle from Proctor, the quick hands, the quick release, and just really just that right spot, poking it in towards that top left corner. And Cam, I stand corrected, that goal was in fact assisted by John Ceramic, so those two connecting three times already in this one. And the same spot as well behind the goal. Making it work those backdoor passes is Ceramic. Comes out with a ground ball, a huge one for this Indica Energy. They're over there on the sideline bouncing around. And you're in a three goal game right now with nine minutes left to go with the number two team at the Division Three level. This is a big spot right now to really come together in the big moments. Playing in a conference as tough as the Liberty League and this team hanging tight. Not ranked. But Cam, you mentioned it at the start of the broadcast, you gotta love an underdog story. As Brady fires one towards Perry and that one is turned away. If they got offense clicking on all cylinders right now, ceramic. Dangerous behind the net. Finds Giannuzzi. And a timeout called by the engineers. With 8.26 remaining, RPI up 10 to three. Still a three goal deficit. But great work by the Bomber offense in this one. And a really good job from them once again responding. And we saw them have a good defensive stop on the man down. RPI forces a turnover, they score. That's when the Bombers could have folded. Four goal game, then about 9.45, 10 minutes left to go. They come down there, Proctor and Ceramic, their ability. That's been the bread and butter right now. And if RPI can continue to not figure that out, Ceramic, quick pass to Proctor, you find a quick screen that Proctor can come around, that could be the thing that Ithaca continues to use here in the final 826. And that momentum, all starting with that huge penalty kill that they got against the Engineers where Sam Baker takes that penalty and they get that huge stop on defense to kind of work in transition and, and get down into their own ozone. Saw it maybe start to kind of slip away from them there and they come back with the energy. Tommy Pierce's squad, they've been very good at responding, like you said, Cam. And right now, too, is a game where, you know, th this year they've only been able to really squeak out one super close game against the College of Worcester. That came back on 313, but... This game reminds you a lot of that St. John Fisher game, first one of the year on February 25th. Ithaca had more of a lead, but it's one of those close games where mistakes mean a lot more down the stretch. When are you going to play your best few minutes of lacrosse? This 826 almost has to be perfect. It's still a three-goal game. You feel that momentum, but you're still down by three. 
And if you're head coach Tommy Pierce, too, you got to be talking to these guys about, okay, maybe if they do drop this contest today to the number two team in the country, there's still positives to take away from this. And you hung tight with a very good offensive team and maybe even have an opportunity to win it here late in four. That's really big for this Bombers squad. Not even ranked, not even receiving votes. A major underdog in a big spot. Gianuzzi gets us going here with 8.18 to go in quarter number four. Ceramic behind his own net finds Proctor. Those two working in tandem. Trying to create some space. He's hounded by Sam Mullen. Finally pops it out to Gianuzzi, who works it right back to him. Trying to play it all the way around his own net, Gianuzzi. Trying to body his way through traffic, can't do it. Swings one towards Perry. He makes a big stop. It's Ceramic picking up the loose change. John Ceramic, his first of the day, not characteristic of him, but gets it when it matters most. It's an eight to 10 game. What a save from Joseph Perry initially on that shot from Gianuzzi that just kind of banged off the top of the stick and Ceramic was on that right side of the goal. He had probably a split second to pick that one up and had to have that quick release and got it done. Right place, right time, three assists and a goal. Now you got a two goal game. And sometimes that's all you need, right place, right time, being in the right spots. Eventually, it's going to pay off. And John Ceramic, been putting in his time behind the cage, notching those assists, and now he gets a goal. So 10 to 8 game, RPI still in the lead with 7.24 to go. As they try to respond to the Bombers' electric offense here in quarter number four. Murphy. The lead point getter on this team. Working around Mare. This is Mazella now. Finds his teammate and a shot rings off the post. A little too close for comfort there for the Ithaca defense. And Morrow's the closest one on the defensive side to that ball so the Bombers take possession. Ithaca defense also playing extremely strong here in this fourth quarter. We've seen a lot of, big part of it has been Marr and right there in Michael Gillum. Gillum has been all over the field getting in his steps out there. Derek Stout though will slow things down as Gillum finally gets a break and steps off the field for a substitute. Little miscue there. Little bobble of the ball by Colin Adams, but he takes possession and swings it towards the net. A great stop by Perry. Bounced off the pole of his stick. And out of play, Proctor's the closest one to it. Bombers can get right back to work with 6.10 to go here in quarter four. 50 seconds on the shot clock for the Bombers. Niebuhr working quick steps. Little poke by Aswari. Behind the net, Ceramic tries to go over his shoulder. That's long. You love that aggressive shot, though, from Ceramic. And really, in a time like this, got to be more aggressive. Need volume. It's hard to catch Joseph Perry off guard, but if you can do it, you might as well. Ceramic, downward, bounces off the turf and goes in. Joseph Perry. Right past his sick and John Ceramic. Two in a row. The captain making his presence known. And the golf swing celebrations from the Bombers sideline. Strong second half here for Ceramic. We saw him in the assist department in that first half. Has three points total in just this second half. He had a one goal game here with 5.44 left to go. A lot of time. But if the Bombers cannot get comfortable and this faceoff means a lot. If you have to get back on defense, have to hold on and watch out for Luke Murphy. Already has five goals. And with all the energy here at their home stadium on the South Hill, a beautiful Saturday and a beautiful second half here for the Ithaca Bombers as Hunter Wallace and Venuto go at it at the faceoff circle again and Venuto comes away with it. 
Piat. Can they respond? And Ozier trying to work it past the defense. Martin is screened, and Ozier will hand it off to Rafini. Goes behind his net for Murphy. Mazella checks into this one and gets to work quick. Smith turned away by Corrigan off to the races. Here comes Hunter Wallace. A two on two situation. Niebuhr working quick in transition, trying to get down there for his teammate. Ceramic says, hold on, let's set up. Brady checks into this one. Pastor at the top. This is Niebuhr with it. Slowing things down here. 10 to 9. RPI still in the lead with 4.27 to go. What a nail biter so far. Gianuzzi swings it and goes long. All the way over the fence here at Hagen Stadium. It was almost tipped off. It looked like from Neely on that inside. Proctor gets right back to work. Gianuzzi here on the near side. Trying to deke his way through. Ops for Pastor on the far side. Down to Niebuhr. Near side again. Bombers working it all the way around. Here's Niebuhr. Little miscue, but scooped up by the Bombers. Niebuhr to Ceramic. Turned away by Perry. Goes straight up into the air. Bombers retain possession, though, as the shot clock rings. Should be a reset on that shot clock. Went off that top of the post there on one of those shots. So 53 seconds and counting here. But this possession means a lot because that 90-second shot clock, if RPI can get it back and hold on here. Winding down, as we said, the engineers, their defense and that clock, their best friend down the stretch. So shot clock resets to 60, and the Bombers will start over with Giannuzzi on the far side. Trying to work it into 25 yards. Finds Ceramic on the far side. To Brady, who's had one. A couple of different goal scorers for the Bombers. Who's going to be the next one? Proctor trying to open up space. Giannuzzi. Trying to work it through. Pastor was there down low, couldn't find a lane. Ceramic finds his teammate swinging it towards the net. Is Giannuzzi a couple hard shots from him? It looks like Coach Pierce wanted a flag there as Giannuzzi just got pushed from his side on that shot. Regardless, no penalty called, so Nero will get right back to work. Bombers trying to find that double-digit tally right here as they throw it away as the shot clock winds down and the engineers get to start all over from the far side with 2.40 to go. A 10-9 to lead. RPI can almost work down the shot clock and put the pressure on the Bombers. Ozier. Up by the logo. He's guarded tightly. The press defense from Martin. A huge moment here for this Bomber squad. Says a lot about their character here, Cam, that they've been able to battle back here from a 7-2 deficit. Such a phenomenal battle. As Swanson swings one towards the net, but Corrigan with an athletic save. And Corrigan's been a big part of this final about four and a half minutes. So Sedlock will work it over midfield. Gets his subs in and Niebuhr can get to work on the near side. And a timeout called by head coach Tommy Pierce on the Bombers. 
With a minute and 34 seconds remaining, RPI just a one goal lead and a chance to tie it up if you're Ithaca. And it'll be 60 seconds on that shot clock, so you think that this is pretty much your final full possession for the Bombers, where you can set things up right now, bring out your best plays, your best opportunities, and you're definitely going to see multiple chances for Proctor and Ceramic behind the goal to get them working once again. And this is where it matters most. You come back, you're down 7-2 at the halftime break. You think it's all lost against the number two team in the nation. You fought back here in what we started the broadcast. We talked about an underdog story. The Bombers right now have that phenomenal opportunity right here to tie this game up at 10 and really shock the whole entire D3 landscape. And Ithaca going shot for shot with the engineers for shots on goal, 10 apiece. But what's really been the difference is the conversion. Ithaca converting on three of those goals here in period number four and, and four in the third quarter. So you got to wonder if your RPI, that defense was so strong in the first half, what happened? A big part of that as well is I think is the Bombers were being a little bit too selective, especially in that second period. What they did in that first period early on was we're going to take shots at a high volume. We're going to make Joseph Perry work in goal. We're seeing especially in the back half of that third period and here in the fourth, Ithaca said, look, if we get an opportunity, we have to start taking these shots and see how things roll, make Perry work, and we can't wait for that perfect opportunity. And that's how you come back sometimes. You have to take some rushed, low percentage shots and see where things fall. Now you're down by one, and this is a possession here where you can go back to taking a high percentage shot, find the perfect chance right now, and come up big. Yeah, I'm looking down the stretch how big a win this would be for the Ithaca Bombers. They didn't make the tournament last year and haven't made the tournament for two years. And be until back in 2021, they lost in the semifinals. So to beat a team that is really in contention to win the Liberty League this year, that would be huge. Huge right now. And what that would do for them in just top 25 scenarios and tie them up with one win, one loss in the conference. Bombers get back to work with a minute and 30 remaining. Adams tries to work it in. Ceramic with it behind his own net on the far side. Twisting with it in his hands, trying to drive through. He shoved to the turf, but tries to scoop it back up. A scramble for the ball, and coming out with it is RPI. Proctor tries to get it back from him, but Joseph Perry maintains possession, and RPI can just hold this till the end of the game if they feel so inclined. Bomber defense trying to press, though. Derek Stout trying to get on Perry. All the way down the field, he launches it and corralled in and batted back into play by Ogert, but it would bounce out of play, so the Bombers will get one last crack at it. All the way down the field. Corrigan hands it off to Mayer. Baker gets to work. Proctor dipping and dodging. Finds Pastor. With 17 seconds remaining, he has to work quick. Pastor to Niebuhr. Back to Proctor behind his own cage. Finds you Pastor off the stick of an RPI defender with seven seconds to go in this one. 39 seconds on the shot clock, but doesn't matter. Just seven seconds for the Bombers to work. Got to remember the late period tally, Pastor swings it to Perry, and that's turned away. So a second and a half on the scoreboard, and RPI, the closest man to it, they get possession. All they have to do is launch it down the field. And the Bombers drop their second Liberty League Conference game of the year, 10-9, to 9, to the number two team ranked in the country, the RPI Engineers. And what a game overall, and, you know, not always does a team want to take more victories away from a contest, but the number two team in the nation came in here after taking down the number two team in America last week in RIT, and the Bombers in a game where you saw that first half and said, okay, you know, this is what it's going to be like, five-goal game. Ithaca came out in that second half and showed a lot of resilience, a lot of buying into this Tommy Pierce era on the South Hill, and what a fight back on the offensive side. They communicated at a high level, and they were one goal away, one shot away, inches down the stretch from tying this game up against 
almost the top team in America. A lot of team, a lot of things that you can take away from this one, especially if you're Ithaca moving down the stretch where you have to take on number eight Union, number three RIT, and number five St. Lawrence as you move into the rest of your conference schedule. But that's going to do it here from us from Higgins Stadium. I'm Rihanna DeCrow alongside Cam Mana. We're going to hand you back to the wonderful people in the studio. But thank you so much for listening to Bomber Lacrosse here on WICB.